What's up, collectors? Big E back. Figured I'd uh, turn the camera around so I could look at you guys again. It's been a while. So, um, something I wanted to talk about today that I've been meaning to talk to you guys about for a long time is uh, the topic of do you watch baseball? And for me, that's I collect baseball. So I'm, I'm keeping it baseball, but it, it applies to, to football. It applies to basketball. And I guess my question is, do you actually sit down and watch the games, watch the ABs, or if you're into hoops, do you watch the game? Do you watch them shoot? Uh, football is the same thing. Or do you follow the trends? Do, are you a trend follower? Do you see what cards are doing? Do you follow the prices? or do you actually watch the games? So, um, and the reason I'm asking that is, I think it's very important to put your eyeballs on a player and watch them play the game. Um, so, and I guess that's from me, um, even coaching travel ball teams. I mean, <clears throat> you can hear about a kid, but until you put your eyes on him, you, you really see how good they are. And so I guess what I'm saying is, you watch these big league games and you hear about <clears throat> Juan Soto and you hear about Acuna and Tatis and, and you can go back to Griffey and Bonds and all those guys. But, you know, for me, I had never, I had never heard or I'd never seen Juan Soto play. I'd heard his name back in 2019, but being out of market, I didn't have the MLB network. I'd never seen him. And when I saw him in the playoffs in that World Series run, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, and I and I grew up watching Bonds, Griffey, uh, Maddox, you know, your, your Tony Gwynn's, just all these guys, just, the, the, you know, the, the mid to late 80s through the 90s. And I said, that's the best hitter all-around hitter I've ever seen. The closest comparison is Tony Gwynn. Uh, but Tony Gwynn didn't have the power Juan Soto has. So um, that was just my question to you guys. Do you watch baseball? Do you watch the games? Do you put your eyes on them? Or do you follow the trends? And so I just think it's important to watch the games so you can get a feel for, man, is this somebody I want to invest in? Or am I just following a trend? So anyways... Um, that was my first question, um, and I'll show you a couple of cards I picked up. As you know, I've mentioned on my Instagram that, um, you know, Juan Soto got off to a slow start, and so there was a, there was a huge dip in his market because, like I said, he was ba basically hitting 280 at the break, maybe 275, um, 11 homers, like 38 RBIs. You know, he dominates the home run derby, doesn't win it, but comes back, and he's hit five homers since then. He's batting like 600. I think he's all the way up to ninth in batting in the league. Uh, he's second in walks, so his numbers are just taking off. And as a result, the market, his market is taking off again. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple cards I picked up during the dip um, that I shouldn't have picked up for the price that I did, but um, I got them. So the first one is a... 2018 Juan Soto rookie card gold out of 50 you guys can see that um, sick card it's a PSA 9 didn't have this card but um, got this during the dip this was comboed with let me find it Uh, this right here I got these in a lot so I got this and I got this sick rookie card atomic refractor uh, it might not have been a lot but the, the, the guy that sold this one was selling this one too so I think I made him an offer on both of them and he accepted um, you see that's a 10 and that's the power producers atomic refractor rookie card um, sh shouldn't have picked these up for the prices I picked them up, but 
like I said, the, the dip was real. And so pick both of those up. Uh, let's see here. I got four, maybe five more. I'll show this one real quick. This is a Tatis 2019 Mojo. You know, I've talked about the Mojos in the past. They, they do really well. Um, look at the Acuna, look at the Luis Robert. So this was like 15 bucks. You know, you get that slabbed and you got a strong card. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is autographs in the hobby. So if you look at particularly 2020 and 2021, autographs have gotten out of hand like just thousands of autographs and like each player's got um, a, a statistic with autographs another statistic with autographs and just they're everywhere and um, and I know why Tops and Donruss and Panini and all these guys they're doing it because they want you to chase them they want you to keep buying the product chase these autographs try to find them um, and you know, that's what you're into, go for it. But I, I'm just gonna say that I think there's too many and you need to be selective on the ones you go after. And when I say selective, I mean, me personally, I'm gonna chase the flagship uh, autographs. Um, you know, the Topps Chrome, the Bowman Chrome, the Topps Series 1 and 2. Uh, I'm gonna try to stick to you know, the Topps Chrome Black, uh, the, the Stadium Club. Um, you know, there's so many. You got, and I wrote them down here, so I'm going to try to read these. But the, this, just the chase cards. You got Transcendent, Luminaries, Panini, Tier 1, Museum, Inception, Gold Label, um, Definitive, Tribute, Donruss. There's just a ton of chase cards. So, um, I don't know, what do you guys think about that? You know, you can, I'm gonna use Juan Soto for an example, and I'm gonna say, is it um, one of these, it's either transcendent or something where they'll have like five or six different colors and then, you know, so many out of 10, so many out of 20. I mean, there's just so many to choose from. Um, if you're gonna chase those, I would suggest you get the ones as low a number as you can get, you know, out of five, out of ten. But um, anyway, I just want to get y'all's thoughts on that, on the number of autographs um, in these products now. It just seems like it's just skyrocketed. Um, and having said that, I picked up, and this you can throw this one in there, Tops Fire, but this card was so low, and I was like, this is a pretty cool card, and it's a Mint 9 to 2020 Soto. And I don't normally pick these cards up, but this is an example of kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, and this is out of 25, you guys can see that. But this is out of 25. So this is the second year, uh, Tops Fire. I picked this up for a little over $100. Um, and you remember what I said, it cost you $200 now to slab this card. So you got your money's worth in the slab. You know, who knows if PSA will ever bring the prices down again. But, um, you know, I don't know how many of these he has. Out of This one's out of 25. I'm sure there's one out of 10. I'm sure there's one out of five. There's probably a one of one. Um, but anyway, I like the photo of him staring at the bat. So I picked it up. And plus, it was super cheap. Uh, okay, so we talked about the you watch baseball, bro. And we talked about the autos and the hobby. So, um I'm going to show one more card, and then we'll talk about one more thing. And that is a pretty sick card. I picked this up for <clears throat> way below than I should have, but people were unhappy with his performance, so they started dumping them. And this is the Rainbow Full in a PSA 10 Juan Soto. If you listed this card on eBay for such a low price. I wanna thank you personally on my YouTube channel. Thank you for listing this for so low and allowing me to pick it up. But uh, 
I looked at the pop report on the Rainbow Fools. I think it's like 340, 350. So that's a really low number. And when you consider his gold, his flagship gold is numbered out of 20, 2018. So there's 2018 copies out here. I don't know how many of these Rainbow Fools are out there. If somebody knows, let me know, leave a comment. But I would think that these are way lower. So um, what are you guys' thoughts on the top flagship to pick up? Is it Rainbow Full or is it the gold? Leave me a comment but like that. I think this is my second one I've owned, second or third. I know I have two now. So, um, okay, I got two more slabs to show you. But first, the last thing I want to talk about is buying raw cards. So, um, as you know, you can buy raw, you can buy graded, you've got PSA, Beckett, you've got HGA, um, you got all kind of, of options out there. But um, do you guys prefer to buy raw cards or do you prefer to buy boxes and chase raw cards? And um, I'm kind of on the, well, I'm not on the fence. Hold on one second. I had to sneeze. But, um, you know, chasing raw cards. You know, you go buy a box of 2018 Tops Update, a jumbo hobby box is like $1,500 to $2,000, and you're looking for that Soto, that Acuna, that Otani, and more specifically, you're looking for a Black or a Memorial Day or, a, you know, Independence Day or something. But, I mean, you can spend $1,500 and get a dud, and chances are you're going to get a dud. Um, and I get it. On the flip side, it's so much fun to rip packs, man. And I'm not knocking you for that. I like to do it too from time to time. But, you know, you got to lower your expectations of, you know, if I buy this, you know, two, three, four, five hundred dollar $500 box on eBay or from somebody, and my expectations is I'm going to pull a stud and you don't flush the toilet. You got nothing. And so... When I got back into the hobby, my mindset was I wanted to buy boxes, I wanted to chase cards. Now, I have a totally different perspective. And while it's fun to do that, I would rather let you, you bust the boxes and you list them on eBay and I'll come in and buy them. Because it's impossible, nearly impossible to find the cards you're looking for. And if somebody else busts the boxes, I can go out on eBay, find the player I'm looking for, find the insert I'm looking for, pick that card up for less than what it would cost me to buy a, a super jumbo box and try to chase that card. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. And this is the first card. Um, this is the, and I pulled one of these cards myself. I'm talking about not chasing cards. Well, I bought a couple of hanger packs and got super lucky. Y'all remember the video, I pulled the Camo Juan Soto. Well, I picked this one up. This was on eBay for, I think the guy had it listed for like $290. This is number six. I made him an offer for $150 and he took it. Okay, so that's a Camo out of 25. This is the rarest chase card you can get uh, of all of them. You got the Black out of 67. You got the Independence Day out of 76. Mother Father's Day out of 50. You got um, the vinyls or whatever they are, the statistics. But this is the rarest one you can find. So for 150 bucks, I got the Juan Soto Camo and I could have bought 100 jumbo boxes and not pulled this. So that's kind of my thought process these days is I'll let you guys break the boxes, put them on eBay, and, and I'll go pick them up. Here's another one. And this is 2019. And this is the black out of 67 Juan Soto bat in one hand. You guys can see the number there. But this is a pretty big card of Soto. I have two of these now, neither is graded. But if I want to get them graded one day, I have that option, but 
again, I've bought, I've bought super jumbo boxes of this with the expectations of, well, I'm gonna pull this big card. Didn't happen. Didn't happen for me. So, and again, it's fun to rip, no doubt about it, but I want to get y'all's opinion on that. You know, buying raw versus chasing. Okay. Here's the next card. <clears throat> this is the 2016 Mike Trout Orange Refractor Auto out of 25. Jim Mint 10, population of one. <clears throat> I was watching this card for a while and the guy had it listed for like $2,500 by now. And um, it ended a couple times. And so uh, I watched him relist it <clears throat> and he put, uh, I think he put like 1500 or best offer. I couldn't remember, but I do know that I offered him 1000 and he took it. So uh, ne never would've got this card if Mike Trout hadn't gotten hurt. This is a sweet car. This is probably one of my better Mike Trout autos. I don't have a lot of Mike Trout autos. And so um, I was jacked to pick this up because this is definitely a hold for me. Um, yep, that's going to be in the collection for a while. It's real clean auto. <clears throat> but Mike Trout, 2016, top's finest orange refractor. All right, one more. And I picked one of these up recently on my Instagram, posted it. Hobby Hawk sold it to me. It was the Juan Soto Super Fractor, The Man. I love those. Brings back memories from 1998. But here's another one. And I sniped this one at the last minute. If you were following it and you're bidding on it, I'm sorry. Big E got you. I got you. It's the orange... Out of 25, look at me, I'm grinning like a chest iron cat because I know I got you. It's a mint nine, but I don't care. This is my dude, Juan Soto, the man. He is the man. And I don't know how many copies of these are out there, but I know the best is 25. So there you go. The, Mon the Man Juan Soto Orange Refractor. These cards, are, they look better in hand, but they look better in my hand. In fact, all these Sotos look better in my hand. In fact, all of your Sotos look better in my hand. So if you're interested in sending me your Sotos, I'll hold them for you forever. So <clears throat> that's gonna be it, guys. We covered a lot today. Do you watch baseball? Autos in the hobby. Raw, chasing raw cards versus buying boxes. Love to hear the comments. Leave one below. Don't forget to like the video. Appreciate all the support. Love interacting with you guys on Instagram. I love when you guys show your photos and your Juan Sotos and uh, tag me in them. Uh, really enjoy that. So keep it up. And we will see you on the next one. Biggie out.